Um, so uh, I, I, I do know something about Japanese calligraphy. I'm not talking about that tonight. Um, I, I am going to take the challenge of the theme for the night and talk about kung fu. So um, uh, a year and a half ago, I was in this place. Uh, this is a city in China called Pingyao. Um, these are my photos on, on Flickr. You can see my handle up there. See, look, that's me. Um, and uh, Pingyao is a fantastic city in northern China. It's north of the mountains facing the Mongolian plain. And so when I was there, it was um, November. That's a terrible time to go to that part of the world because Mongolia is contiguous with Siberia, and those places are effing cold in the wintertime. So don't go there because A, it's effing cold, and B, there's no notion of central heating. So um, at, at one point, I had to break out my terribly broken Mandarin and go down to the, the front desk of my hotel and say, in Mandarin, because they didn't speak any English, there is a problem in the room. There is no hot water. And they said, 7 o'clock. Because that's when the hot water gets turned on by the government. And you get water for two hours. So you can be warm for two hours a day. So anyway, um, Pingyao is a, a fantastic city. It's a, it's a <laughs> Ming and Qing dynasty city. And it, it did not fall prey to any of the problems that have plagued ancient Chinese cities, notably war, fire, earthquake, or communist city planners. Um, and so from the city walls in, it's still the old city. And so you get to go, you get to stay in places that are traditional houses where the rooms have been converted to hotel rooms. Um, and there's a, a lot of the old buildings that are in better shape have been um, converted into museums. And so you, like, you pay 20 bucks and you get entrance to everything for a couple of days. So I went to this place, which is read from right to left because Chinese is written in columns from right to left. This says Hoi Wu Lin. And the central character of the Wu means uh, warrior. And the Lin, you know, Shaolin, it's the Lin in Shaolin. It means forest, and it's typically applied to martial arts schools. So this is a traditional martial arts school in northern China. Um, and uh, for those of you who can read any Chinese, the, the characters running down the sides here, this says Ping Yao, which is the name of the city. So now you know how to recognize it, so you can find it on a map. Um, and um, when you go in, this is what you get. This is the place. This is, an, uh, this is a martial arts school. This is what it looks like. And as you go further in, you see, oh, look, crazy weapons. These are the kinds of things people trained with. There's a lot more that they had in there. Um, and then when you get down to the bowels of the compound, you get into the actual practice courtyard. The, I mean, and, and this looks like it's out of a movie, right? This is the real deal. And so what you realize when you look at this is that you don't come and train here like people in North America go and train martial arts. When you're training this thing, this is, this is a lifestyle. And, and this is actually what I really want to talk to you about. Um, you, know, you get into the, the building at the back there, and there's this like statue of the god of war with the crazy calligraphy, right? Um, but uh, Gong Fu does not mean martial arts. Gong Fu means excellence. You can have Gong Fu in anything. Anything. You, you make tea, you can have Gong Fu in tea making. You write code, you can have Gong Fu in writing code. And so you, we've all had this experience, right? Either, um, well, We've all had this experience where you go and you talk to like the really senior engineer, the really senior engineer, the, the person who's been there forever. You. And they know all the things. No, it's not me. I am not the person. I'm number 24. There's 23 in front of me. <laughs> and, and I go, I go and, and locally I go to Bill Kaiser. Those of you who know who he is, he's, he's the man. He was the first engineering hire. Um, and uh, when you go talk to these people, they just kind of know what's up. And they can fix all the problems for you just by hearing you talk to them for 30 seconds. They're like, oh, your problem's right there. How do they do that? Well, they have gong fu. Well, how do they get there? And the way you get there is you have to have a training hall. You have to have a place where you spend your life, you spend your time doing this. To get good at writing code, you have to write code. You have to write a lot of code. You have to keep writing code. Good days, bad days, doesn't matter. On a bad day, yeah, you write worse code. On a good day, yeah, you write better code. It's good. You gotta learn from the mistakes you make on the bad days. You gotta learn from the successes you make on the good days. And by doing that over years and years and years and years, writing the code becomes reflexive. So when you're starting out, and those of you who are starting out, you know this because this is your life. Those of you who are beyond that, you remember this because this was your life. Every time you want to write one line of code, you're like, oh, wait, what is the API for that? Let me look that up. And you have to go look. You have to go figure it out. What's, what's a good algorithm for doing this thing? I don't understand this problem. Let me go look that up. 
And you're spending your time doing this research, trying to find things. And over the years, you look less and less. You do research less and less. It's just there. And it's not a conscious thought process that gets you there either. It's this innate practice knowledge. And the way you get there is by doing the practice. So this is about Gong Fu, right? Gong Fu is practice. And that's what it is. Daily practice, regular practice, deep practice makes it good. And, and I'm going to quote to you from one of my uh, martial arts instructors, uh, full disclosure, not Gong Fu. It's Japanese martial arts, so I, I studied Aikido. And he said, um, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Write your code like it's going to production with a million requests a minute. If you don't, you're never going to learn how to write code that can go into production at a million requests a minute. Write your code like it's the real thing. Practice it. Live it. And then that, those practices become internalized, and then you'll become a phenomenal developer. And you can be like Bill Kaiser. You can be number one at the company, and the company will succeed. That's my talk. <laughs>